Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A reading from Romans chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God justifies the ungodly, not the good, not the pious, not the hard-working, not those who try their best, but the ungodly. God justifies the wicked, and those who believe this, their faith is counted as righteousness. It's a miracle. It's the ongoing miracle. It's contrary to what we expect. It's illogical. It's not fair. It's not fair that those who did nothing worse, that those who were hostility toward God are declared righteous, not guilty, forgiven, and they receive everything that the holy, pious, godly receive. Of course it's not fair, because it's grace. By grace you are saved through faith. It is God's work, not your work. It is God's salvation, not your salvation. It is God's so that it might solely depend on him and not on you. For you are not good enough. You are not pious enough. You do not try hard enough, not even now. Neither did Abraham. Yet like your father Abraham, you are righteous before God. You are certain that you are forgiven in all your sins, great and small, past and present. All your sins, including your sinful flesh, are covered because of Jesus. He is the atoning sacrifice whose holy blood covers you and all you do. He paid the price. He satisfied God's wrath. He died your death. He has done it all. He was delivered up for your sins. He was raised for your justification, St. Paul says. It's baffling to our logic. Grace is baffling. It's not how we operate. We love those who are kind to us. We forgive those who make it up to us. And when we offend someone, we want to make it up to them. But it's not by works. It's by grace. Salvation is a gift from God to you. Not a gift based on God's feelings of love, but a gift based on God's demonstration of love at Calvary which is now proclaimed to you by your pastors. Now God sees you through Christ. From head to toe, inside and out, thoughts and actions, he sees you through Christ. You are judged according to Christ, whom he forgave at his resurrection. Because of the resurrection of Christ, you are forgiven all your sins. They cannot condemn you. The ministry declares this to you, and faith alone receives it. Abraham was justified by faith. He was justified by grace through faith in the coming Christ. And while we're on it, the whole Old Testament church from Adam to Malachi was justified by faith, even as the whole New Testament church from the apostles onward is justified by faith. God has used countless men throughout the ages to speak this. Many of them fought to preserve this simple teaching of grace. Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon, France, was one such man in the second century. Today we remember him. He fought against the Gnostics who taught that all material things were evil. Irenaeus countered by stating that by the Incarnation, God became part of his creation to redeem his creation. As St. Paul said, God justifies the wicked, not only your soul, but your soul and your body, All that was conceived in wickedness and hostility toward God has been declared righteous in Christ. It's grace. And it leads to a wonderful resurrection of the body for eternal life. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, you have declared us righteous because of the work of your Son for us. Keep us in this simple grace all our days. In Jesus' name, amen.